Tom McDonald is the professor for this class. Um, I've been working with him for a couple months and he's awesome. I know from experience that he puts a lot of work into this lecture series. He takes a lot of time to find good speakers. So it's a really good class and we're excited for you guys to be here. Um, but Tom has had over 25 years of experience in senior management, including international CEO and board positions. He was elected to the Orem City Councilman for the 2014-2018 term and was recently re-elected for the 2018-2022 term. Tom received the 2007 Businessman of the Year Award from the Provo Orem Chamber of Commerce. He is a partner and former president of Canyon Park, a real estate holding company consisting of the former WP Novell Orem campus. He is the former president and CEO of Clear Inc. in American Fork. He is currently an assistant dean in the Woodbury School of Business here at UVU. He served as mission president of the Oregon Eugene Mission 2008 to 2011 and he is married to former Kay Mangum of Orem, and together they have four married children and 13 grandchildren. Here's Tom. Thank you, that's great. It's really exciting to be with you today. I think, is this mic on? Yes, it just switched over. We're gonna have a great 15 lectures, well at least 14 of them will be great, and I'll be the intro and talk a little bit about that. Before I, ha before I came to Utah Valley University, I had the opportunity to uh, speak here a couple of times as a guest lecturer. And so it's really fun to be here. And this should be one of the best classes you have. Uh, I know the other professors think that they teach good classes, but I'll tell you why this is one of the best classes you're going to have. First of all, I hope you'll do something throughout your course that your future self will thank you for. There's always an argument between your future self and your present self, right? It's like when you're thinking about grabbing that donut, your present self says, eat it. Your future says, don't. If you're thinking about spending money, your present self says, spend it. And your future self says, don't. I want that money in retirement. But I hope during the course here, you can do something that your future self will thank you for. You'll learn something from this course that your future self will thank you for. Everything, all the materials we learn about here are available on Canvas. That's not a surprise to you. You've been to more than a semester of school here. The syllabus is there. All the speakers are there. I, th I see some of you holding the brochures of who's going to come speak. We have a lot of great speakers coming. Some of them, frankly, won't relate to what you're thinking about. And that's not a problem. You ought to learn things from them that you probably don't want to do. Others will just, be, will just really hit it for what you're thinking about doing and becoming, and you'll learn a lot from that. I hope you'll, you'll enjoy, you'll learn something from every person who speaks to us. Um, our mission is to understand lessons learned by business leaders on their career path. You'll have people in here, how many of you hope to start or, how many of you hope to start a business at some point in your life? Okay. So the rest of you will be working for them, so watch their hands when they go up. How many of you hope to have a more senior position than what you're currently doing while you're going through school? So for all of you, we hope that you'll be able to develop your career and become something significant in life. How many of you are the first college student in your family? First generation college student. You know, statistically, 38% of UVU students fall in that bag, pot. And 35 years ago, I was the first college student in my family to graduate from college. So you have opportunities, and there's a lot of opportunities outside of college, too. But you're going to learn from business leaders that hopefully you can avoid a landmine or two on building your own career. This will help you. This course, I hope, helps you to figure out what successful business leaders did well and maybe what they didn't do so well. I hope you'll learn some of both of that. Throughout your life, you're surrounded by leaders and you have been a leader. Tell me, and this is where we're going to have class participation, tell me where you've been involved in some involvement where there was a leader and you were either the leader or the follower. Just raise your hand and tell me. Can you tell me what that was, please? Me? Yeah. Um, captain of the soccer team. You were, a soccer, you were on the soccer team. Perfect. And you were the captain. Yeah. Perfect. Where else have we seen leadership? Please. Okay, we have two leaders and so far no followers. Hopefully we'll find a follower at some point. Yes? Okay. 
I think leadership starts much earlier than that. Where else have you seen leadership? Okay, I'm going to give you a picture. Aren't your parents your leaders when you're little? Are any of you parents? How many of you are parents? I mean, that child, when they're newborn, would just die without your leadership, wouldn't they? So early on. Then you have homework assignments, hopefully your parents or other older siblings help you with. You're in a classroom in an early age where you have a leadership role. I think someone talked about being in a soccer. You have a leadership on a football team or a soccer team. You maybe were involved in Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts where there's leadership opportunities. More of those photos popping up. Baseball, soccer, there's lots of opportunities. You maybe had a first job at a McDonald's or somewhere else. How many of you, had a, how many of you worked in fast food at some point in your life? Are the leadership principles there the same leadership principles that work, would work in, uh, in other organizations? Many of them are exactly the same, some of them very different. You have leadership, again, another sports activity. You notice we are picking on Utah Valley University. Is there any leadership in a personal relationship? Is it always one over the other? If there is, uh, you're headed to a different, you gotta go to marriage counseling, not to a business class. But there, there are many opportunities in relationship to show leadership and followership and build an organization, it, what, whether it's a family or otherwise. And we have leaders in our country um, who may or may not be always agreed to, but they are leaders. And well, this is not a political science class, so we're not gonna go down that road. So let's talk a little bit. You know that I'm the instructor for this course. The bulk of my hard work happened in the summer months, or in the winter months, when we were planning who we were gonna speak. Getting someone to come to this class is an honor to them, but it's also an honor to you. But trying to arrange the right kind of speakers is what we spend months before this class starts doing. And we're grateful for the course lineup. We'll talk a little bit about that. This is a one credit hour class, pass or fail. Haley already let you know, if you sit there and turn in an attendance slip, you're gonna pass. I don't think you'll get much out of it, but you're gonna pass, okay? If you just sit here on time, Haley, we'll talk about grading and that. How many of you have already reviewed the syllabus and know something about the grading for this class? Okay, the rest of you, this is all new information, so pay attention. We're here at the Reagan Theater every Thursday from 11.30 to 12.20, and then afterwards there's a lunch do we still have opening for lunches today? So there are a couple spots open for lunches. You get credit for coming to the lunch, and you get a meal, and you get to ask leadership questions. That, I think, is one of the highlights of the class. I realize others of you have class immediately after this, and you may not be able to go. One has also already emailed me and said, I have a dietary restriction. If you let us know that a couple weeks before, we'll have a special meal for you so we can meet your dietary needs. So if you're interested in joining us for lunch after and talking about anything we might cover as leadership, we'd be happy to see Haley after the class and we'll perhaps have everything. I think asking Haley is kind of the indicative of anything. Um, if you ask the TA, you're probably going to finish. So if you can't find it in the syllabus, please drop us an email because we want you all to pass. We want you to all get something out of this class and we want you to have a good experience here. Haley, I think your picture pops up next, but they've already met you, so there you go. This class, and, and why I think you should come to this class, oops, it didn't click for me, sorry, offers you the opportunity to hear experiences from leaders, and many of you have said you want to be a leader either in starting your own business, or in a business, or in a family, or in a nonprofit entity. There's a lot of areas that you can be a, a, a leader. You should come to this class and pay attention. So, I don't know if any of you are taking notes. You are, allowed, you are encouraged to take notes, and that's the only reason your laptop should be open, is to take notes on this class. And if you turn those into Haley, you get a couple points, and we're gonna go over grading pretty soon. So this is what you can learn from this class if you do your assignments, if you attend and you listen. You can discover how businesses are being doing, doing right now in the community and what they're doing right and wrong. You can find out lessons from others and what they've done well and perhaps what they've not done well. You can explore your career. Have any of you, when you were little, wanted to be something that you no longer wanted to be, want to be? Is that fairly indicative? 
you wanted to be a fireman or a princess or a football player. My son came to me when he was five and said, I'm not sure if I should be a professional football player, a professional basketball player, or a professional baseball player. The careers are just endless. Those are the three. And I said, my wife, who stands about six inches shorter than me, I said, look at us. Your gene pool is not good. Uh, and I'm taller than any of my brothers and sisters or taller than any of my wife's brothers or sister. So let's rule out basketball and football and, unless you can be a kicker, right? I mean, that's it. Maybe baseball. But as silly as that might sound when you're 20-something looking back on what your goals were when you're five, guess what? When you're 50, you might look back on the goals you had when you were 25 and think they were pretty silly too. So be prepared to have your goals change and coming to this class might help you with some of that. You're going you're to learn from others how they express their ideas, and some are going to do that very well. They've had great public speaking opportunities, and some of them not as well. But you'll learn from that. Do not judge them too harshly. Just learn from each person who comes, and then you're going to learn what business skills are necessary for you to succeed. That's why I think this is a, a, can be a great class for you. You can come. You can learn a lot. You can learn some things you don't like, and you'll learn a whole lot you do like. At the end of each class, you have a chance to comment on that speaker. And at the end of the whole class, you get to rate whether or not we should have these speakers back again. So you'll be helping future generations of students who come through this class. When you come to the luncheon after, particularly, we ask that you come reasonably well dressed. That does not mean you need to wear a jacket or slacks. But nice, you don't need to wear a dress if you're a woman or if you're a man. You don't need to wear a dress in either case. Just wear, wear, don't wear shorts, don't wear a cat hat. Be nice business casual. We're going to go over that. And I think it's in the syllabus too, isn't it, Haley, if they have any questions. So when, when the speakers are speaking, be thinking of a couple of questions that you might ask them. Okay, I'm going to go through the don'ts. Don't. Leave your, uh, oh boy, I hope my cell phone's off, it is. Uh, it's, it's only here for my timer, I think. Don't leave your cell phones on. Do not answer emails, check Facebook, Instagram. Don't do that while you're here. You're also not allowed to bring food into the theater. I saw someone finishing lunch outside, whoever you are, wherever you are, thank you for finishing your lunch out there. Um, it is the right hour to be having lunch, but we, they don't, we don't eat in the Reagan Theater. Uh, don't do homework for other classes. Don't sleep. <laughs> Talk to other students. You are able to answer. Let's get through, out of the don'ts really quick. Don't wear hats during class. Hey, you with the hat on. You're, you're, um, that's not as big of a deal to me at, during the class. It is a big deal when we have the speakers here, okay? Let's talk about the do's. Would you read out the first do? Yeah, please. The lunch man. Yeah. Example A, you did very well. Thank you very much. Would you read the next do, please? Sure. Do you think of one or two questions you can ask during the Q&A at the end? OK. So we'll do that today. If we have time, you'll ask questions. Sometimes the speakers go long enough that we do, really don't have time for questions. But be thinking of some questions. And then always, at the end, come down and ask a couple questions of speakers. Some of these people are not only great speakers, they're potential employers for you. So be thinking about that as well. Would you read the next don't do, please? Do express your appreciation to the speaker after the session. Okay, how do you exp first of all, you expressed appreciation for me before you even knew what I'd do. You were just being nice. But at the end of the at the end of the class, an applause for the speaker is appropriate. And if you do speak to him or her, thank them for it. Would you read the next do, please? Huh? Oh, I can't read it. Well, okay. Would you help her, please? Yeah. Do you work on speaker reviews for this course? Are you doing that right now? Yep. It's good for a couple points. We're going to go into the pointings. So this class is pretty easy. You get 100 points out of about 150 possible. We'll go through the details of that, and you pass the class. So I think we had 150 some odd students. Four or five, seven or six or seven of them didn't pass because they had other things come up in life and didn't come. But if you attend the class, this is going to be easy. We're going to, t we're going to go through this. If you attend the class lecture, again, this is pretty well spelled out on the syllabus, but if you haven't read it yet, if you attend the class on time, you get seven points. If you're late, you get five times. 
Well, you people ought to be pretty good in math. You're in business. There's 15 classes. 15 times 7 is more. How many? Yeah. Thank you. you didn't, she thought I couldn't do that math. She was helping me out. That's what a good TA does. She helps you even with the easy ones. But if you attend all the classes, you pass the class. Okay? Oh, did, hold on. I missed one, didn't I? Nope. Don't come super late. Okay? Today, I don't think we're marking anyone late. So if you came in a little bit late, you're getting credit. But afterwards, she'll have different papers you fill out for being on time and a different paper if you come in late. You come to lunch, you get five points. Not only do you get a great meal put on by our folks here in, in food services, and you get, again, I think some of the best time with the speaker one-on-one, -on -one. you get some points and you get a free meal. And when I was in college, that was fairly important to me. Next one. Write a one-page review. Is that a full one-page we want for this class? Write a one-page review. I think Haley gives you some examples and syllabus of what that needs to be. It doesn't need to be over verbose, but we do take your, your comments and share them with our speakers. Uh, please, Haley, speak up loud because they need to hear you. Did everyone hear that in the back? We want to share some of this feedback with the speaker, so give it in bullet points. Not, don't do it in bullet points. Sorry. She's the one who actually grades them, so she feels much more strongly about this than I do. Do not just make bullet points, but write something that we can share. So it doesn't need to be overly wordy, but just give some, don't just say, I really like the speaker. That doesn't help us much. But the speaker who spoke about this resonated with me and use an example. Thank you. OK, what if you miss a class? Because you're going to miss a class. I mean, right now, there's not been good enough snow to justify missing a class. But there will come time when there's fresh powder, or for some other reason, you'll decide you need to miss a class. We understand that happens. You can do a makeup. You can watch the video online. It comes out about a week later. And Haley will let you know when it's online. You can watch the video online and write a more detailed review of the class. And you can still get your points. You can do that twice. Because mostly we want you here so the speakers have an audience to speak to. Okay? So that should be fairly, fairly easy. And here's the takeaways. Uh, I, again, on the syllabus, it tells you how all the point spreads are. Do you have someone have a question on that? Okay. So just come in, come to the class, write off a little, write a little bit, and get ready to do great things from the class. Okay? Any questions on the grading? Okay. Well, I'm going to go through something on a leadership that I found 30 years ago in my career. And it was a letter that uh, J. Willard Marriott wrote to his son when he became an executive vice president. And he talked about things that he thought would make his career successful. And I'm going to go over these with you, and I'm, I'm going to ask for some reading. So can you help me with the first one? Yes. Please. The first one that we've talked about the letter. What are some of the guide suggestions he made? Keep physically fit, mentally, and spiritually strong. How many of you buy that physical fitness business will help you in your career? Okay, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up if you believe that. Keep them up. How many of you worked out this morning? How many of you plan to work out before the end of the day? Okay. Why? Well, I, I was an hour in my gym. I have a gym at my home, and I worked out for an hour before I start my day. For me, that is essential. I don't think you can be very sharp the rest of the day if you're not physically fit. This also records the mentally and spiritually fit. I realize we'll have differences of opinion for those, but for me, that's part of my life. Not only do I want to physically work out, I want to get closer to what I believe is a divine being with some meditation and reading. So that's part of my morning routine before I do the rest of the stuff. I think it's important. So whatever you're doing, I think whatever your routine is, make sure you stick with it. And for me, it's easier to do every day than occasionally, because occasionally becomes never, and every day stays pretty current. Could you read the next one for me? Either one of you. You're together. You're, whoever does this one, another one's going to get the next one, OK? What kind of bad habits do you think will destroy you in business? Please, in the back. 
Well, we'll get to you later, okay? No, exactly right. Procrastination. Anything else that can destroy you in business? Lying. What? Lying. Lying. Okay, the old Boy Scouts of trustworthy, loyal, helpful, good, please. Showing up late. Showing up habitually late, please. <laughs> Wonderful. Have you been going through anger management? Are you doing okay right now? <laughs> okay, good. Anything else, please? Yeah, you just don't care. And, and, and frankly, you've, you've seen the little videos that says your millennials don't care, but I don't believe that to be true. You wouldn't be here getting an education, right? You've got, you're making the effort. You're wearing a tie to class. Good for you. Showing up the professor is never a good thing to do, though. Please. I think pride is a big one. Not having a sense of gratitude into your phone. Feeling entitled, no pride, no gratitude. Excellent. I'm, I'm staring into bright lights, so if I don't see your hair, hands, I'm sorry. Please, in the back. No initiative. No initiative. You, again, the very fact you're here, you're asking questions, shows me you have some initiative. So just be careful. And bad habits, gossiping, and all the things you might learn as, as little kids, um, they can destroy you in business. I, all of you said great things. And um, I don't know your name, ma'am. Would you please read the next one? Again, this is not supposed to be a religious class, so some would pray, some would meditate, some would have deep thinking about every difficult decision. You don't just go into them, you think through that. I have found that to be a source of strength in my life. I was grateful for this 30 plus years ago because sometimes you think about separating what you think about in business and what you think in your personal life. I believe you should be thinking diligently about every tough thing you've got to do. Haley, read this one. Where do you study professional management principles? Please, coming to a class like this? Thank you. At least the other 14 lectures, please. Where else can you study them? Other classes. Other classes you have? Good. Where else? Um, like Wall Street Journal or news articles about business journals and things like that. Perfect. And on the far right there, I think, sir? Yeah, there's a lot of TED Talks. How many of you have listened to a TED Talk? Aren't they great? Now, some of them I don't listen to, and I only get to a couple minutes, and then I drop off, but a lot of them are great. Excellent. Please. At your own job. At your own job. What do you do? Okay. And so you learn professional, you learn good and bad, don't you? You know, we had the example of McDonald's, right? And sometimes bosses in, in a low-paid, high-pressure job aren't teaching you principles that you want to learn forever. But you can learn from that of what not to do. OK, when you graduate, are you ever going to read another book? What books do you think might be helpful? What books have you read or think might read, you might have heard of that might teach good business principles? A lot of books that people recommend to you, like smart people that are really successful, books that they recommend. So if you ever have a speaker here who opens it up for questions and you can't think of any, can you think of a question you'd ask just off that? Perfect. You're, you ought to be sitting at the front whenever we get stuck. I'm going to turn to you and say, ask your question. Because you'll learn a great insight from them about what kind of books they read. On my, in my, on my bookshelf, I always have a business book, some kind of brainless book that I need just for entertainment, and some type of spiritual renewal for me book sitting by my bedside. Depending on what I'm feeling that night, depends on what I'm going to read. Okay? Excellent. Uh, sir, with the backpack in front of you, will you read the next bullet? People are number one. They're developing loyalty and team spirit. Develop managers in every area. How many of you have had a boss that you think believed that? Okay, in the back, what, what, how did he or she make you feel? What did they say to you? How did you know that they felt that way? Okay, they cared about you, they asked. I was really hurt that Haley didn't raise her hand. She's never had a boss like that, but we'll go, we'll go separately. Anyone else had an experience that was positive with the boss, please? They let you take more control over the kind of work you do. I don't know if you heard that, but they let you take control, more control over the work you do. 
I have the great privilege of working with Dean Wright, the Norm Wright, the Dean of the School of Business, and he allows you to get the job done. I really appreciate that. And I think throughout your business life, and maybe some of these speakers, or maybe a professor, or maybe someone you know in your neighborhood growing up, is being a mentor to you in some ways. How many of you feel like you have a mentor in your professional life? Well, guess what the job is in about 20 years, or maybe only five or 10? To become the mentor to someone else, right? And to be that kind of boss. So find a mentor now, be a mentor later. Uh, good sir, here with the code on. Would you read the next one, please? Make crystal clear what decision each person is responsible for and stick to your decision. Have you ever failed in a, in a business assignment because that wasn't done? And, and whose fault is that? The boss or yours? Or both? So if you get an assignment that isn't crystal clear, do you think your boss is going to mind if you ask him or her? What you, okay, I think I understand what you meant. And get that crystal clear, because you're not going to do the job well if you don't get it crystal clear, right? Great. Would you help me with the next one, please? What does that mean? Someone help me with that. Any ideas? I'm going to pick on you just because you look nice. I hope you are, and I hope you think I am nice at the end of this. Um, if I work for you and I'm not doing my job very well, do you tell the coworkers, boy, that McDonald just can't hack it? But do you have a responsibility to tell me what my problem is if you're my boss? Absolutely. Okay. You need, you need to make sure that I'm aware of where my strengths and weaknesses are. But don't just criticize me with someone else. Okay? Uh, man with the Mac, would you read the next one for me? Yes. How many of you had a boss like that? How many feel like you didn't have a boss like that and didn't like it very much? Okay. Well, did you, do you learn from both bosses? Okay. See the good in people and let them develop and help develop those qualities. Okay. To the woman with the sweater and the scarf, can you read my next one for me, please? What does that mean? What if that's a person? What if it's your brother? What if it's your neighbor, your sister-in-law, brother-in-law? That is tough. But when do you let someone go? If the other plans haven't worked, you've got to be willing to do that. That's part of being a boss. OK? Uh, someone help me with the next one? Some, just read someone from up above her, please. Please, go right ahead. Thank you. What does that mean? Just your work time? Personal time? Okay. You know, I, I, we had a great, several, I mean, I get to come to these speakers almost every week and sometimes twice a week because we have an entrepreneurial lecture series too. And we often hear about a work-life balance. How many of you have heard that? Okay. How many of you hope to be able to maintain it? Well, we had a speaker who said there's no such thing as a work-life balance. There's choices and consequences. What does that mean as it relates to work-life balance, you think? Please. I think you schedule your priorities, not prioritize your schedule. Because obviously, you're never going to be able to make everything balanced in your life. So if I make a choice that I'm always going to go to my son's football game or my daughter's ballet lessons or soccer games at 4 o'clock, you're always going to miss out on something else. What are the consequences of always doing that? And conversely, if I make the choice to, I'm never going to leave the office before 7 o'clock, so let their little plays at the elementary school be darned, I'm never going to attend it, what kind of decision have I also made? What consequence have I made? I don't know which is right, but that's what there are. There are choices 
and consequences to your choices. And you've got to be prepared for your consequences. When I was uh, vice president of international for a software company, I was going to Europe every month and making three or four domestic trips a, week, a month as well. So I was on the road a lot. And I, you start to see the same people on the airplanes if you're flying out of Salt Lake. You know, if you're going to wherever, you see the same people over and over and over again. And I was spending an awful lot of time on the road. And I noticed that none of them were very old. They were younger guys. And I thought, this must not be an old man's sport. This getting 250,000 frequent flyer miles a year must not be an old man's sport. And I started kind of rethinking what I ought to be doing, right? It's an old, old song, but how many of you know the song Cats in the Cradle and the Silver Spoon? Okay, I, I have dated myself, but some of you were kind. Do not make me feel too old by raising your hand and at least knowing that. I don't know what the right choice is, but there are consequences to the choices you make. And you've got to do what's right and measured in your life. I do know that people who don't make that choice, their life will be made for them. So you've got to make those choices in your life. Can someone over here help me with whatever the next one is, please? Please, read it for me, please. Read it loud. OK, explain that to me. OK, how many of you remember the first time as a child being delegated something from your family, a parent responsibility? Would you mind sharing that experience? Assuming it didn't end with a beating, I'd be grateful not to be talking about those kind of experiences. Oh, I'm sorry. Ladies first, and then we'll get you two. There were two right in a row. Thank you. Daily chores. And so you were delegated that daily chore, and your accountability was, if you don't do it, you don't get your allowance. OK, cause and effect. How many times did you do your daily chores? OK, you're money-grubbing capitalists. I like that. You'll do well in this class. OK, man in the back, please. Well, it sounds like you got out of all your jobs. I'm not sure that's a very good one. <laughs> I, if you didn't hear, he had to take care of the dog. And because they didn't, they got rid of the dog. Most problems don't go away by just giving them away. But that is, they delegated the responsibility. My guess is you liked that dog. You just didn't like cleaning up after him. Is that right? OK. We had dogs when we had children. And now we have freedom and do not have dogs. So, OK, well, thank you. I, two great examples. The capitalist, you watch her. She's going to go places. Um, someone here with the, right, just raise your hand and tell me you'll read the next one, please. Thank you. What does that mean? I thought a boss wasn't supposed to know any of the details. What does that mean? OK. You've got to know enough about the details that the people can carry them out and you'll understand them. Do you need to be an expert in all fields? Absolutely not. When you become a general manager, all of a sudden, no matter what your path came through, whether you came through engineering or law or accounting or sales and marketing, you're going to be assigning people details that you don't know, the de the, how to, all the details. But you've got to know enough about them to have them carry them out. Someone in this area want to read the next one for me, please? Just raise your hand and read the next one. Thank you. In the back, next to the man with the books. What does that mean? Please. OK. How many of you remember a Blockbuster? You might have been a little kid and gone into a Blockbuster. Any of you remember it? They had a chance to buy this little snot-nosed startup company called Netflix and passed on it. How's Blockbuster doing? Yeah, thank you very much. Now you are making me feel old. How's Netflix doing? Now, what, what, does Netflix need to, are they done now? They don't need to think about new ideas? OK, make sure you keep up with new ideas and keep your business alive. This is one that, as you become a senior manager, is a little bit tougher. Uh, sir, with the red jacket on, could you? Uh, So 
So I'm going back to my greedy capitalist in the corner, okay? Mom gave you the assignment to make the bed, and she didn't like the way you made it. Did she just remake it for you? Absolutely. You didn't make your bed. I understand. Whoa. Your mom's not incarcerated for any child abuse or anything, is she? <laughs> Wonderful. I'm glad that answer was no. I would have had a whole new problem. You need to help the person do their job. And part of the thing of being clear earlier, you need to help that student, that, that employee, that child, whoever you're a leader of, work through those pieces. And then, I think this is important in, in, a, in an organization. Please, sir, would you read that for me, please? Think objectively and keep a sense of humor. Is everything going to go right in business? No. Keep a sense of humor. Think objectively and work through them. And make sure you have some fun. Um, one time I was uh, interviewing for a job, and I'm going to edit what was actually said. And this man could tell I had a sense of humor, and he wanted someone who was different than that. He wanted someone I thought mean and nasty. In fact, he said, I don't think you're a big enough, hmm, how do I say this? Um, he, he said it not very nicely, um, to work here. And I said, well, thank you very much. My mother would be so proud of me. <laughs> I didn't get that job, and I was grateful. Do not take a job that's going to make you become something different than who and what you are. Enjoy, you got to enjoy your work as you go. I am a firm believer that if we did everything that we're capable of, we would astound ourselves. An unknown guy by the name of Thomas Edison said that. And he astounded himself and the world by what he accomplished. Some great stories about his life. How many of you remember the fire of his facility? Have you, can you tell that story, please? Tell me a little bit of that, that story. So it was like his late 60s, up until that point, he had like this kind of this film business. He had a fire that went on, and I got accidentally combusted, and everything that he had basically went from flames. So how I heard the story is his daughter showed up on scene, and I was like, oh, where's my dad? Where's my dad? Like, you know, my everything's like, on the heck my hand basket. Kind of that, and her dad, on the other side of says, daughter, go find your mom. She'll never see a fire like this again in her life. And then, um, and then basically he just gathered the whole team and said, hey, we need to rebuild, we need to do this, we need to do that, and you have to go get the machine, you have to get the equipment. And by the way, does anyone know where the money's at? Like, does anyone know how we can get the money at? And then basically everything we know to be a Thomas Edison invention came after that fire. Did anyone hear that story pretty good? Fire destroyed everything. He could have committed suicide. He could have been depressed. He could have become a drunk, town drunk. But he became the great man we know him to be. My guess is you have had or will have your own fire in your life. You'll have a time when you think everything's gone to heck in a handbasket for you. And he, took the, he had the great courage to enjoy the blaze <laughs> and encourage his family to enjoy the blaze. When you have the blaze in your life, you can't do anything about it. The blaze is coming. So do the best you can. So, as is for most of ours, we're going to so I've given kind of half a lecture on leadership and half about how we get through this class. I know you're going to ask me one question in the back. I'll, I'll look forward to it soon. But before he asks his one canned question, are there any other questions we'd like to talk about? Either about how to grade the class or about leadership principles, please. Remember, you've been thinking about questions to ask the, the lecturer all time, right? Please. You know, I, I had had an exit. He asked me what brought me to education. I had kind of thought that I'd end up in a nonprofit entity. You know, you kind of you, you, you earn and then you return, right? You make a little money and then you say, what do I want to do next in life? And so I was, I'd had an exit from a business, had a little bit of liquidity, and was thinking about what I'd do next. And President Holland gave me a call, who we had known each other for a series of over years, and said, Tom, why don't you come to UVU? And I, I said, that'd be great. So we ended up coming here. So that's what got me here. Thank you. Please, and then I'll come back one. What skill would you say that most employers are looking for in a new employee? Wow. I'm going to feed that. I'm going to play that back. What skills do you think are most important to you? What do you see your current employer looking for in people? Teachable. Teachable. 
particularly at the entry level, right? Because at the senior level, they want you to still be teachable, but they hope you know something, right, right. as you come in. So teachable, that's good. Please, in the back, somebody had? Uh, just my experience has been at the floor point someone who wants to excel. OK. They want to show up to work. They want to be on new projects constantly. I want to do this. We need to first try this. And even if it falls into the flat, they want to see that you're trying to your thinking. So because this is recorded, I often repeat. So basically, can I repeat that just with the drive to keep going? Mark Pope, our, our basketball coach, says, all of my students have a PhD. They're poor, hungry, and determined, OK? And uh, are, are, do we have any athletes in the room that are currently playing for a UVU team? What are you playing? Are you poor, hungry, and determined? Then your coach is going to love you, OK? So, I, you know, it depends really on, there's sometimes very technical skills you need. If you're going to be an auditor like this man uh, was, you need to know some skill set. If you're going to be in marketing, you've got to know something about social marketing, et cetera. But I think those general skill sets are also going to be important. You had a question, please. Why did you get involved in politics? And what lessons did you learn? Uh, well, if I'd learned enough lessons, I wouldn't have gotten involved in politics. He, he, he asked that question. So when Haley gave my intro, I'd come home as a, an LDS mission president, wanted to know what I could do to give back to the community, and thought that, uh, you know, three or four people suggested you run, and if you have any interest, it sounds like the whole town wants you. And so I ran, and I think the lessons I've learned, it's, it's, it's um, you can do a good, you've got to be willing to do a good job without getting out, outward praise. Uh, you don't get as much outward praise in politics as you do in some other forms. So, okay, anything else? We are allowed to end this class early. Huh? You're not allowed to ask that question, that's his. Hey, you with the hat. You got a question? Yeah. Well, they change because I, I don't take six years to read them. The one book that I read from a spiritual enlightenment was Clayton Christensen, How Will You Measure Your Life, that I read recently. I also read uh, Man's Search for Meaning recently that are kind of spiritual insights for me. I assume you might be familiar with one of those, those books. I just brainlessly read a John Grisham book, his newest one. I can't remember the titles because they're all roughly about the same, but they're kind of a nice story. On a, on a business book, I just read, oh, oh golly. I can tell you about it. I, I read The Four Dis Disciplines of Excellence. And I just read another one that I really like, but I can't remember the name. Oh, The Ideal Team Player. I don't know if you've read that. It talks about you want to pe hire people who are smart, humble. And humble means they're willing to work with others, not a spiritual side of humble. And I can't remember the other. But The Ideal Team Player was a great book. And Anyway, those are a few that I've read recently. Well, I can keep you for another five minutes or we can let you out early, which is your druthers. We'll let you out early. If you've got an attendance slip, please turn them into Haley or Megan, who are going to be in the back. If you've signed up for lunch, please join us. If you'd like to, we'd love to have lunch with you and continue this discussion. Thank you for being here today.